everyone. Praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you on this Resurrection Sunday. It is so good to see everyone. What a blessing, what a blessed day that we are gathered here together. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Let us begin our morning worship service. Once again, this is Resurrection Sunday. A time that we should be glad that our Lord and Savior completed his assignment from God the Father in heaven, that each and every one of us could have an opportunity for eternal life. He died on that Friday, buried, and remained in the grave for three days. But on that Sunday morning, he arose. And our Lord and Savior wanted us to know as he wanted even Martha to know back when Lazarus died. That he indeed, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And ask a question, do you believe this? Now, he was talking to Martha, but he's talking to us even this day. Do you believe? Martha responded, of course, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is come into the world. He gave his life on Calvary, shed his blood for you and me. Do you believe this? Our opening hymn is hymn number 79.
Praise him, praise him. Let us remain standing for our morning scripture as we look to God in thanksgiving for his son on this Resurrection Sunday. Our hearts should be prepared for giving glory and honor to him this morning. And it calls for us to have a clean heart. Psalm 51 will be our scripture this morning. Psalm 51. Yes, I know it's usual when we have communion that we do our church covenant. But this entire month we've been given by God a urgency for us to prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts in a rightful way that we may receive our Savior. Amen? Amen. Psalm 51, and it reads... Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitudes of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire the truth in the inner parts, and in the hidden parts you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. A renew and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. You do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will treat, teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will, shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed. O oh God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Your praise. This is us giving back unto the Lord and to our God as he has given to us. What more can we give for the price that he's already paid for us in shedding his blood for us? Our morning prayer. Good morning and happy Easter to everyone. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, this morning we lift our voices to you. We thank you for this greatest 
day in history when Jesus rose from death, defeated darkness, and bade the world in stunning resurrection light. May we ever live to praise you. Lord, we thank you this morning for that touch of love so that we could witness one more Easter Sunday. Lord, we, God, we love you. We love you because you love this world so much that you gave your one and only son that we, that we might be called your children. Lord, this morning I ask that you help us all. Help us all to live in the gladness and the grace of this Easter Sunday. Live it every day. Live every day like it's Easter Sunday. Let us have the heart of thankfulness. The thankfulness for your sacrifice. And tell that good news. Tell that good news of your sacrifice to our church family. Tell it to our families at home. Tell it to anyone that's willing to listen of your goodness. Tell them the good news of what you did on this Easter Sunday. And the reason that you're telling all this good news should be, should be for your glory and your glory all by yourself. We do pray this morning on this Easter Sunday. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Jenkins, for that morning prayer. Thank each and every one of you for being with us on this Resurrection Sunday. And we'll now have a selection from the choir. Amen.
better than that. Yes, thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. All right, we're going to have uh, our trustees come forward at this time, and uh, then we're going to turn it over to our uh, Sunday School Superintendent. Amen. Let us stand, please. Good morning. Happy Easter to everybody. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again with open hearts and open minds. We come to you thanks for all your blessings that you have showered us with all week long, yeah. each and every day. We want to thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your mercy. Yeah. We want to thank you for the blessing that you have given us this morning by waking us up to see another day, another day in life. And for this blessing, we want to say thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I want you to bless those who gave on this tithe for the upkeep of your kingdom. Bless those who gave, bless those who desired to give, but for some reason couldn't. And for this blessing, we want to say thank you. And Heavenly Father, once we have ended our journey down here on this earth, have us a place somewhere up there around your kingdom so we could continue to praise you forever and forever. And this is my prayer. In your son Jesus Christ's name, our Savior, I pray. Amen. As always, uh, thanking you, trustees, for your diligent service. And to you, congregation, thanking you for your obedience and giving back unto the Lord as he has pressed and prospered you. Those online, thank you for your continued giving as you are away from us. But uh, we thank God that uh, you continue to tune in and be with us each and every Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, we'll now turn it over to our Sunday School Superintendent, Brother Terry Hawthorne. Amen. Good morning, everyone, on Resurrection Sunday. Good morning. Well, now, uh, some of you have something that you would like to share with us for Easter. Uh, but first, we'll start with the scripture. Our scripture this morning will be coming from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Deacon Jenkins, if you would, give us a prayer, please. Let us pray. I ask that you pray with me with bowed head and closed eyes. Father God, it's once again you have allowed a few of your servants together in the church house one more time. We pray that you will continue to bless this program, this service, this children's program, this Easter service children's program. Pray that what they say will be pleasing in your sight. We pray that the words that these children are going to share with us this morning We'll find a resting place deep within our souls, for we know and understand that these children belong to you. And Father God, we truly understand that you will continue to care for these children. And then, Father God, when all these blessings have been completed and we can no longer share on this side of journey, Jordan, we pray that you give us a home somewhere around that throne where we can continue to praise thee forever and forever. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Jenkins. We'll now ask for our young people. Uh, do we have anyone that is not in the first grade yet, beginners, uh, kindergarten, and preschools that have something you would like to share with us? Some of you may want to come up later on with some of the older, so we'll, we'll allow you to do that. Okay, so do we have anyone in grades uh, one through four that has something you'd like to share with us?
Jesus has risen. Jesus has risen. Jesus has risen. Jesus has risen. Joy. 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 I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he is always near. He lives. The Restruction. We hold so close to our hearts the cross where Jesus dies. But so much then the blood stains cross and that Jesus came back to life. The stain been rolled away, the tomb laid down open and bare. It looked for him, and then the angel said that he is no longer here. Oh, what joy they must have felt to see him just once more, to eat with him, to drink with him, to receive him back as heart. So much, so much did the accomplishment through the death upon the cross and, it, and his rising from the dead to recall us back to God. Nothing else could bridge the gap that sins have wrenched apart that we can freely go to God and receive Christ in our hearts. Thank you all. Uh, oh, that's okay. We're going we're gonna to make sure we get everybody. We're not going <laughs> to leave anybody out. <clears throat> Say it real loud. Say it. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Elijah. My name is Elijah. Happy Easter Day. Do we have anyone in grades five through eight to have something you would like to share with us? <laughs> grades five through eight. Uh, what about uh, high school, nine, grades nine through 12? Okay, now, uh, now we have some adults that may have something you would like to share. Uh, if you would come up and share what you have. Uh, Sister Dominique, I think you have a poem. You would like you can go ahead and do that at this time. <clears throat> Happy Easter! Easter is the gift of hope, peace, and love. Let us delight in Him who gives us them all. Happy Easter to you and your family as we celebrate the Father's greatest sacrifice. Through his son, Jesus Christ, Easter brings God endless blessings. May his light shine down upon you and be happy. And you're inspired with new hope, new happiness, prosperity, abundance, all received through God's divine grace. Have a blessed and meaningful Easter. Amen. Thank you, Sister uh, Heyman. Uh, do we have anyone else? We don't want to leave anybody out. Some of you uh, older young people may want to have something you may want to say. We want to make sure we don't leave anybody out. Okay, thank everyone for their participation. Uh, we thank all of you all. Uh, we thank the parents, grandparents, and the family for supporting these young people. And we ask you to continue to do that, to continue to get them, to have them to get up here in front of the church because it's not easy. Once again, thank everyone. All righty. Uh, could I ask, could all of the young people please stand? Just the young people, not, not you, Deacon. Just the young people. <laughs> the young people, if you stand. Young adults. <laughs> thank you. Now, let's give them a hand clap of praise this morning. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your participation this morning. All of you were lovely. We appreciate you having the courage. That's what it takes to be a leader. You start out early. Start out in the church. Start out with scripture. Start out with knowing who Jesus is. Grow them up and they'll know which way to go. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Let's All right. 
Very good. All right, we're now ready for our announcement and recognition of our visitors. will be followed by our benevolent report and uh, the benevolent prayer with uh, Deacon Grant, if you would. Good morning, Pleasant Hill Church family. These are the announcements for this morning. Govern yourself accordingly. Bible study every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Telephone number is 1-888-708-1438 with the code 2693. Musicians needed. The Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church. Mount Nebo Church Road, Seneca, South Carolina. Please contact Mr. George Anderson, phone, uh, phone number is 864-360-3339. We have a card this morning. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. Luke, the sixth chapter, the 38th verse. Praying the Lord blesses you, giving, praying the Lord blesses your giving heart in abundant measure. Thank you from Sister Melissa Young Hancock. The Seneca River Women's Auxiliary is hosting a District Fork workshop April the 20th at 10 o'clock in the morning at the Seneca Family Life Center. The topic will be preserving our heritage. It'll be a workshop facilitator, Dr. Belithia Pitts. Please put this on your calendar. The deadline for pre-registration is April 10th, 2024. You can mail your registration to Minister Marsha Hawkins 13 Yolan Way, Simpsonville, South Carolina. We will place this particular announcement on the bulletin board in the back. For you Bulldog fans, South Carolina State versus Florida A&M game on August the 30th, 2024. There will be a bus that is leaving the Walmart on Liberty Highway in Anderson, South Carolina. And they are heading to Orangeburg um, for the game. Cost per person is the double uh, occupancy, $435. Triple occupancy, $345. A quad is $300. There's a non-refundable deposit that's due by May 3rd in the amount of $100. Sponsored by the a and Travels, LLC. We will place this announcement on the back. Okay. So instead of going to Orangeburg, the big city of Orangeburg, South Carolina, <laughs> heading to the city of Tallahassee, Florida, on August the 30th to see the South Carolina State Bulldogs versus the Florida a &M game. You know, it did cross my mind, $435 to go to Orangeburg? That can't be right. <laughs> that was the case, I was going to open a new business. <laughs> We've had a marvelous service this morning. Um, yes. We had the Hosanna, blessed be the rock. 
and certainly let's give our crowd a, a give our choir a, a hand. Well, any any other announcements this morning? So we have the upcoming event. Um, I think I've covered it, but it's the District 4 Women's Workshop to be held at the Family Life Center on April the 20th. The fee is $15 with lunch. And Brother Rosalind, if I may just do an uh, acknowledgement. Uh, we did have our Union Number 1 quarterly session yesterday, and I thank uh, those that were able to attend, I know I saw Brother Randy, uh, Brother, Rodney. Brother Rodney was there as well, and Sister Moore. Sister Moore, uh, ever present, she's been there for working with the union for a number of years. We won't say how many, but she made an announcement yesterday. Uh, that she would like to step aside, and I say step aside, those are not her words, but she would like to step aside. She's been working with uh, Minister Vanessa Wood with the young people, young people's training for many years, and she would like to step aside, which means that there's someone needs to step up and step in that position. So. Think about it, put it on your hearts that you can try to step in those shoes. It's not going to be easy. And Sister Moore, if I have anything to do with it, your name will be on our program forever as you being a trainee of the youth session. Amen? Amen? So please, thank you to everyone. Rodney, thank you. Uh, Randy, thank you. And thank you for being there yesterday. Amen? Thank Amen. you. Amen. The District 4 workshop travels to different um, areas in Spartanburg, Anderson, Greenville, Oak County. Uh, did I leave out anybody? Anyway, this year we are hosting at the Family Life Center, and we would like to have support from our relatives here in Oconee County, our missionaries. And you can be a missionary and be a male missionary also. Uh, you can be a female mis mis missionary. But our speaker is our local home-raised Dr. Belithia Pitts, who is going to be speaking on preserving our heritage and we want to support her. The $15 is including lunch that day, and we have to order the lunches beforehand. So if you, and I hope we'll have representatives from Pleasant Hill to participate, if you could see me uh, by next Sunday uh, with your $15, I'll make sure it gets sent in so you, uh, the lunch will have your name on a box. But again, this is something we haven't done in many, many years, but it's held at the Family Life Center, but we have missionaries coming from Greenville, Spartanburg, Anderson, uh, Pickens County. And so we would like to have representation from our missionaries here. So I'm asking you to please think in terms of being a part of that program on the 20th of April. Thank you very much. Let's support our own. Make an announcement. Who am I to say no? <laughs> Two more things we have this morning. Um, trustees and deacons, there's a joint board meeting to be held on April the 15th, uh, Monday um, at 7 o'clock p.m. here at the church. And finally, um, our church conference is scheduled for April the 17th 
2024 at 7 o'clock p.m. here at Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. Are there any other announcements? Please govern yourself accordingly. Thank you for your attention. Visitors? Um, if you are a visitor here this morning, would you please stand? Well, good. Nice to see a lovely face this morning. Please, would you give us your name and where you're from? I'm Paula Henderson from Mount Nebo Baptist Church. Sister Henderson, it's very nice to see you this morning, and thank you for joining us. Are there any other visitors this morning? Yes. I'd like to welcome the Grant family here this morning. They're certainly not visitors, but it's always nice to see that smiling face and um, nice when home folks return back to Pleasant Hill. Very good. And we also have a college student with the, the Ravens, and we also have um, TJ, which is one of the um, Gen X grandson. They are visiting with us this week. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I, my granddaughter's with us. Laser, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, Pastor Scott sounds like Delane Roseman. <laughs> Pastor Scott looked at me and said, I'm not a visitor. <laughs> but certainly, it is very nice to see each and every one of you all this morning. Pastor Scott, you're certainly welcome here at this church anytime that your heart desires. God bless you. God Thank you. Thank you, visitors, for coming to worship with us this morning on this Easter Sunday. It kind of um, goes back to what I heard this morning. It says, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Thank you. You, thank you. You know, you're welcome up if you want. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Minister Vicki, thank you for being with us this morning. And the granddaughter, of course. Yes. Minister All right. Pastor Very good. Pastor Scott, Minister Hunter, Minister Rogers, Minister Henderson, church family and friends, these are your <coughs> sick and shut in and bereavement lists. We pray for the ones in the hospital, nursing center, homebound. We have uh, Minister Goodine, Billy Poole, Mary Stigers is home, Calvin Stigers. Pray for him, he's gonna have surgery, I think Friday. And Henrietta Wright and Tony Wright. Do we have any more? We don't. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sister Brown. Thank you, thank you. Right. Deacon Grant, if you would, if you lead us in our benevolent prayer this morning. Let us pray. By God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, clothed in our right mind, with a push in our health and strength, allowing us to see another Easter. By God, our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Lord God, bless all those that are sick and shut in. Bless all those in the hospital, Lord God. Bless all those in the nursing, Lord God. Bless all those that are homebound, Lord God. Bless all those that are affected by these wars and rumors of war, Lord God. Lord God, bless all the families in bereavement, Lord God. Bless the doctor, the nurses, and the caregivers that continue waking up each and every day, taking care of people with all types of diseases and problems. Bless the doctors and the nurses that continue searching for a vaccine to cure all types of diseases and people that have problems. Lord God, bless the present here church family, members, and friends. Lord God, bless the ministers as they prepare to come before us to deliver the message for service today. Lord, God, bless us all with the blessing we stand in need of because we all have sinned and come short of your glory. But thanking you, Lord God, for continuing wrapping your loving arm of protection around us, keeping us out of all hurt, harm, and danger. That's keeping us out of all hurt, hurt and danger as we travel these busy highways, byways, and alleys, and to and from place to place. Thanking you, Lord God, for allowing us to see another day that we had not seen and will not see again. Thanking you for what, what you have done, what you're doing, and what you will do, Lord God. Thanking you for your mercy, your grace, and your blessing. Then, Lord God, when, the, when we can no longer stay down here on this earth, we ask you to give us a place in your kingdom where we continue praising thee. Again, thanking you for your mercy, your grace, and your blessing. This is my prayer. Amen. Hey, amen. You may be seated. We are ready for the word for this Resurrection Sunday. The choir is going to give us a selection. And after that selection, Minister Jackie Hunter is going to come to us with what God has given to her for us on this Resurrection Sunday. Receive her. Receive her with praise for the work that she's done preparing for this day. Amen? Choir, give us a selection.
has a story. So many times about the blind man who could not see. One day, one day he heard that Jesus, Jesus was passing by. He said, lay your hands, Master, lay your hands. say thank you, God, for allowing me to be able to stand this morning to proclaim your word, God. I ask that you continue to decrease me, God, and let you increase. Father, I am just a vessel willing to be used by you as you would have me, Father. All these blessings we ask in thy darling son, Jesus, the Christ's name, I do pray at this time. Amen. Amen. To interim pastor, Minister Ken Rogers, to our former pastor, Reverend Edward R. Scott, to all the other ministers in the congregation this morning, I do, as I said, greet you in the matchless and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. This morning, my text first will be coming from Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 35 through 39. The subject, if I had to choose one, would be Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Right. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Lord, have mercy. You know, God doesn't always come when you want him, but he's always on time. As I toiled and prayed and searched and called on God to bring me a word from heaven, Jesus, hallelujah, 
He always wait till the final hour, Minister Ken, before he brings it to you. During those times, those are dark and hard times because you don't want to speak from self. You want to hear from heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So as I was studying and I was not really studying but praying and seeking God, the one word that kept coming before me was hope. Hope. You know, as we look at our statistics, things are happening in this world, in our world today, that appears to be in a continuing downward spin. Everything is going everywhere but, but going to heaven. We're not hearing from heaven, or we're not listening out to hear from heaven. This, the media is constantly reminds us of, of violence and suffering and injustice and abuse in this land. Right. And it's sad, but even we are experiencing some of these same things in our churches today. Right. Not just, I'm talking about globally speaking, not just one church, but all churches are going through. It may look dark and dreary, and you may ask yourself a question. How long will this last? How long will it last? I want to take a few minutes this morning to encourage you, church, to hold on to God's unchanging hand. As I said, as I was seeking God for the message, the word hope stayed before me. And I, I, I asked God a question, and I shouldn't have asked God a question, but he said that we can come to him for all things, and I'm his daughter. Right. He's my father. Right. So I felt like I could ask him. I said, God, I said, in this four-letter word, what can we find in this four-letter word? And he said, you find me. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. He said, you will find me. Yes. And I did this while I was sitting Ask God this while I was sitting under the hair dryer. And I said, what can, you, what, can you, what can we find, God? He said, first of all, you're going to find me. Then you're going to find peace. You're going to find joy. You're going to find love. You're going to find salvation. You're going to find grace. And you're going to find mercy. Hallelujah. And with all of that combined in that one little four-letter word, hope. Lord have mercy. Psalms 33 and 20, Psalms 33 verses 20 to 22 says, and I'm going to get to the test. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Right. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Yes. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord. Hallelujah. For our hope is in you alone. I want to remind you today for us that we need to keep our eyes on Jesus because he is in control and nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to get to the text. Just bear with me. So I was sitting there and I said, hope, hope, H, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am who your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Oh, he said, we'll offer. He will offer. This is what he's going to offer for you. In Philippians 4 and 19, he says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. H, we're going to hold on. Hold, and oh, he's going to offer us. And what is he going to offer us? P, he's going to offer us peace. Philippians 4 and 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's a lot of that little word. P, E, eternally. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. John 5 and 24 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, yes. 
Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Lord, have mercy. Hope, H, on hold on. We're going to hold on because O, he's going to offer us what? P, he's going to offer us peace. And that peace is going to offer E eternally. That means forever and ever. If we look at the book of Romans, it was written by the Apostle Paul. And you know, Paul was from Tarsus. His original name was Saul. He was a tent maker by trade. He was also a former persecutor of Christians. Paul, a man called by God. Hallelujah. But he persecuted Christians. He was converted on the road to Damascus while hunting down Christians. And he established churches all over Asia Minor. As we look at our text in the 8th chapter of Romans, it is a light of hope and a reassurance. The reassurance is that God loves us and he wants nothing but the best for us, and he will give us eternal life. It reminds us of the power of the Holy Spirit and the freedom we have in Christ. It also tells us about God's eternal love. This is the book of Romans. Despite our current offerings, we can find comfort in knowing that there is a glorious future that awaits us. And nothing... And I said nothing can separate us from the love of God. Right. Romans 8, 35 and 39, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long, all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yeah. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yeah. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, right. nor powers, hallelujah, nor things present or things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, yeah. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right. Nor height, nor death, nor any other, listen good, right. nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which right. is in Christ Jesus. Jesus, yes, our Lord. Yes. Listen, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yes. No matter what our circumstances, none of the sufferings of this present time can separate us from the love of God. This makes us conquerors and, and more. We are more than conquerors and through the love of God because nothing can separate us from his love. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus, you're going to have to help me this morning, Father. Nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing which appears to be good, nothing which appears to be evil, hear me good, nothing which is good to be evil or appears to be good or evil can separate us from the love of God, young people. Hear me good, young people. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. I'm here to remind you this morning. It's not going to be long. I'm almost finished, as a matter of fact. I'm reminded over 2,000 years ago, there was a man by the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that walked this earth, hallelujah. He was crucified. They spat on him, and they crucified him. They called him everything and every name, but I'm here to tell you, but they crucified him, and he died, and they buried him. Yeah. Hallelujah. But on the third day, hallelujah, yeah. he rose yeah. with all power. And said, How many of you believe that Jesus Christ still lives today? It doesn't yeah. matter what you're going through, young people. It doesn't matter what you're going through, any of us. Yeah. Just know that Christ Jesus still lives. I'm here to remind you to 
in God's hand. Keep your hands in the unchanging hand of God. He is a never changing God. He's always the same. You can trust him in everything that you do. Hallelujah. I'm reminded, hallelujah, when Jesus went to Calvary, that that was love. Hallelujah. That nothing, nothing could take him down from that cross because of the love that he shared for us, the love that he wanted to give us and show us nothing could have taken him off that cross because it was nothing can separate us from his love. Oh, glory, hallelujah. I'm excited today because on oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah, thank you, God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but holy lean on Jesus' name. I'm standing on God. I'm walking with the Father. I'm not worried about anything that's going on in this world because I know where my help comes from. I know, hallelujah, where my help comes from. I know how to trust God. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, God. If you don't know him today, hallelujah, I challenge you while the blood is running warm in your veins to get to know this man by the name of Jesus. Uh, he, he, he's the only one. Listen to me good, young people. He's the only one that can help you. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that you can trust in. Listen, he's not going to leave you. The message is for the young people today. The Lord showed me, hallelujah, that the young people are hurting, church. They need us, hallelujah, to be that light so that they can see Jesus in us. We have to learn how to, to bring them in so that they can receive Jesus as their personal Savior. Hallelujah. We have to teach them who Jesus Christ is. Y'all, listen to me good. It's important, church, that we continue to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good work, Pastor. Mm. And we're going to glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Listen to me, church. This ain't no game. This is not no game. Jesus, have mercy. God is on his way back. He's on his way back. Now listen, he didn't say when he's coming back. Listen up, young people. He's coming. He's coming. And my Lord, you better be ready. Put away everything that's not of Christ and get on board. Because when that sky splits and he and Gabriel blows that horn, she must show more day da da la che da da. It's not going to be no time. Right. He's not going to ask you, are you ready? All right. All right. You better be ready yes. because he's coming. This is my message today. I pray that you receive something. If you don't remember anything else from this sermon this morning, two things. Hold on to God's unchanging hand yeah. and be ready. Yeah. Because he's coming back. Yes. Yes. And he's coming back for a church yes. without spot or wrinkle. Say it. Amen. <laughs> this is my message. Amen. Amen. Mr. King. What a message. What a message. What a message. Hope. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. As Minister Hunter said, in hope you see God. Yes. Hallelujah. And Minister Hunter remind us what it says in verses 24 and 25 of that same chapter. It tells us about this hope that she just told us about. Right. It is Christ Jesus. Yes, it is. It is Christ Jesus that this hope is based on. Get your hope right. Get your hope right. And it goes on to tell us that hope that you can see is not hope. That's right. Yep. But the one that is coming yes. is your hope. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. Yes. 
If you don't know Jesus already in, the, in your heart, yes. get to know him today. Amen. Doors of this church are open. If you don't already know Christ Jesus, if you have been convicted that you should know Christ Jesus, I beg of you, let us stand. Give your life today, for he is coming again. No one knows the hour or the minute. we stand here today on this Easter Resurrection Sunday. Hope should abound in each of our hearts. And if there's something in our hearts that's not quite right, I beg of you, take this time now. We're going to open the altar here and invite you down right now. We talked about it, and, and Brother Roseman uh, reminded us a clean heart is required yeah. to enter into the kingdom of God. We can't make it if we're carrying something that we think that we can believe in and, and hope in, in this earth. It's Jesus that we have to hold on to. Yes. Amen. And within our hearts, if we want Jesus to be in our heart, our hearts have to be pure. Amen. He's already made the sacrifice 
He's already died on that cross for you and for me. And God resurrected him to show us that there is indeed a resurrection for you and for me. But if we don't believe, we're not going to get there. Not where he is. We're going somewhere. Yeah. But not where he is. The seat. altar is open. If you are in need of prayer this morning, prayer for illnesses, prayer for uh, regeneration, prayer for cleansing, prayer for anything that is troubling you and holding you back Jesus. from the hope that God is offering you, I beg of you, make up your way today, right now. Come right now. I personally am not going to be foolish enough to think that my heart is so pure. I beg of you to look at yourself and examine yourself. There comes a time. There comes a time when we need to recognize who we really are. We need God. We can't do this on our own. That is the false hope that the minister was talking about this morning. God, if you would come lead us in prayer for our church. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, Jesus. thou art God. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our heart with wisdom. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with praises on our lips, with thanksgiving in our heart, praying for this congregation. We pray, God, for more love, for more peace, for more joy. 
Bless them with your blessing that they stand in need of. God, we pray for mercy, for justice, above all grace. And God, we thank you this morning for giving to us the best that heaven had to offer. This is your son, Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, died on Calvary. But on the third day morning, he rose again. And he still lived today. God, we thank you today. We love you today for your son, Jesus. Thank you now again. Pray that you bless our home, bless our families, bless our children, bless mankind everywhere. Thank you now, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who didn't have to, but he did. Lay down his life on Calvary. Yeah. Pray that you will continue to bless this pastor here, Reverend Rogers. Pray that you will bless the associate pastor. Thank you for your word today for Minister Hannah. Pray that you continue to bless her to preach your word. That the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you now. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. And Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said amen. And amen. that powerful prayer. We know that you continually pray for our church. There's no doubt about that. But we especially thank you for this morning's prayer. Amen. The deacons are going to prepare to come forward with our communion on this Easter Sunday. Prepare your hearts as they come before you now. Amen. Thanking you, Minister Hunter, once again for an awesome message. Touch my heart. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.
We have come to that part of the service where we are going to do communion. As it was said from the pulpit, before partaking of this communion, if there is anything in your heart that shouldn't be, if there is anything in your heart, and only you know that, that shouldn't be, remove it as far as the east is from the west. Yeah, wherefore, who, said, who shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. This time we have prayer by Deacon Grant. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Broken, <coughs> the bro bread represent his broken body. The shed, the drinking of the wine represent his shed blood. He said, do it in remembrance of him on this resurrection till suddenly till he come again. Amen. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do sure the Lord's death till he come again. Let us all eat together. And let us all drink together. At this time, if everyone would please stand for our benediction. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto the servants, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Now we ask, God, that you dismiss us with your love. Bless and keep us, our Father, and may God be with us till we meet again. Amen.